Karen Borda. Thanks for joining us today on Plugged Into DFW. It is the time of year that we tend to take stock of our lives and count our blessings. But for many, they're not so fortunate. This morning, we take a look at four organizations hoping to make a difference in the lives of those in need around the globe. Up first, Paper for Water, founded by two sisters, children, when they were eight and five years old. Paper for Water has now funded more than 170 water projects in more than 17 different countries around the world. Please welcome to the show the Adams family, Ken, Deborah, Catherine, and Trinity. And I understand we are missing one of our founding members this morning, right, Isabel? Yes. 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 Finals, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. She could not be with us this morning. Now, uh, Catherine, you and your sister, Isabel, came up with this idea, bring clean water to the world. What spurred that on, and why is clean water so important in your mind? So clean water is so important to me because it's the fundamental building block of civilization. You can't fix any other problems if you don't fix clean water first. And then once people have clean water, you can go from there and help solve world hunger or world peace or world medical problems and stuff like that. But you have to start with clean water. But you are five years old. I mean, <laughs> yes. what, what, why are you thinking about all of these things around the world when everyone else is wondering when Santa's coming and, you know, what I'm going to get under the tree and all of those things? What made you g aware of the plight of others around the globe? So I learned that a child died every 15 seconds from unclean water and that girls my age didn't get to go to school. And I still like school, um, but I loved it at the time. And we thought that that just really wasn't fair, and we wanted to do something about it. All right, so how do you bring clean water to those who need it? Because it's a great idea, but how do you do it? So paper for water, um, what we do is we make origami Christmas ornaments, and we take donations for them, and all the proceeds go to fund water projects. So we've been doing it for seven years now, and we've raised over $1.5 million and helped to fund over 170 water projects in 17 different countries. Okay, now you did bring some of your origami projects, and these yes. are absolutely beautiful. So do you make some of these yourself, or do you have them made for you? Yes, we have hundreds of volunteers that help us, but our family and, and me, we also do them. How did you learn how to do this? Did you know how to do it already, or is it something you just learned? So my dad is half Japanese, and he was born in Japan. So he was taught how to do this, and then he taught me how to do it. All right, so now Trinity, you kind of came into this, what, you were a baby, right? You were just one year old when your mm -hmm. sisters decided they wanted to do this. So when, when Paper for Water was founded, um, what were you thinking? You know, obviously, don't know what you were thinking then, but now, what, why is it important to you to be a part of this project as well? Well, girls like me have to walk up to seven miles per day wait, mm -hmm. um, in the dry season to get clean water. And when you walk seven miles a day, sometimes multiple times per day, you don't have time to go to school. And when you don't have time to go to school, the poverty cycle continues. It's just so sad. And, you know, and, and those are things that, that, that so many people don't they're they're either not aware of or they're aware of it for five minutes and then they move on to something else because our society is like that you know we always have to have you know the the next thing and and not everybody is as selfless as you are i think it's it's wonderful that uh, that you guys are doing this so so how do you train people to make these kind of of origami ornaments so we have folding parties once a month and we usually have a lot of new volunteers that come and we teach them how to fold ornaments and then we also have different groups um, who, gr who <laughs> meet once a week mm -hmm. um, and they help us make the Neiman's ornaments and they help us make really everything. Neiman's so. ornaments. Yes, so this year we have um, ornaments in Neiman's and we uh -huh. also have um, our purses and so this is new and they're in North Park and downtown stores uh -huh. um, and so we're trying to promote those. And, and those yeah. are actual little purses. They are, yes. Cute. And so you can put them on your tree. Or, Aww. Yeah. I love it. That's so great. All right, well, let me ask your parents, cause, because um, one of the things that just really struck me is that the kids often have great ideas that just, just sound, wow, that's fantastic if we could only change the world. But what was it about this that, that made you guys so fully embrace this and, and, and take it and decide, you know, we're going to start a nonprofit? Well, I think it started out initially as just a one-month project. It wasn't, uh, there wasn't that end goal inside of creating a nonprofit. 
but it was so successful that we just took it uh, one step at a time. And the, the first two months, they raised $10,000 towards a $9,200 well in Ethiopia. So they overfunded that well. So that led to the second well. They overfunded the second well, which led to the third well. Mm -hmm. And it was around the, the point of the third well that we started talking about, maybe we should do something more with this. So it was, that wasn't the initial plan. So how did you get uh, hooked up with an organization or, or whoever it was that was doing the well? Because I'm sure you guys weren't out there doing it yourselves. I mean, how did you guys, it just seems like so much to it's, do. It's a, I think I would say it's providential. I mean, yeah. the, the, the right people have come into our lives at the right time. And the girls had already done a couple of volunteer projects mm -hmm. um, before selling these wooden cutout dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, and they raised money for Children's Medical Center in Dallas and Parkland's pediatric burn camp. So they had this idea of creating objects and selling them and raising money. And we just happened to have a, a nearby neighbor that had gone on some well drilling, drilling expeditions. And she told the girls uh, about the, the world water crisis. All right, so Deborah, what kind of impact are your girls making? Well, I think that what was wonderful is we took them out of school and traveled for eight months. And we had the opportunity to visit many projects and communities that have been impacted by these projects. And just getting to meet these children and be in their classroom with them and just smiling and happy, in school, healthy, and meeting mothers who told us heart-wrenching stories before they had a clean water. And, um, but there was, there's still so much need. We had people every day come up and say, can you please get us a latrine? Can you please get us another water project? We have such a long line to wait. So there's just so much need. And, um, and you can get really overwhelmed, but we just focus on helping one person at one person at a time and focus on that one piece of paper at a time and that that's like a person we're helping and um, so but just it, it makes such a difference and it's amazing what two little girls can do I mean to save so many lives and because that's essentially what you're doing that's wonderful thank you guys so much for being with us this morning really appreciate it. thank you for sharing your story and for what you do you. And, and for more information about providing clean water to those who need it and to get one of these beautiful origami ornaments just go to paperforwater.org coming up they hope to find loving forever families for every orphan child by the year 2040 and they need your help how you can give a child in need the ultimate holiday miracle and later we talk to a nonprofit working to end world hunger Find out how your donation this Christmas may change the lives of starving children.